Good afternoon. Good afternoon, ma'am. Yes, sir. Yes. How are you, Sudhik? I'm fine, sir. Punjab? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. You like Punjab? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Very much? Yes, sir. Tell me four, five good qualities. Why you like Punjab and two, three bad qualities. Okay. So, why I like Punjab? Uh, number one, the culture of Punjab is uh, famous it is uh, this there is this term called Punjabiyat which is associated with the culture of Punjab it is an extra begin culture people there are ex uh, are uh, perceived to be extremely happy and jolly in their daily lives so number two uh, Punjab uh, it's very welcoming towards its guests the tradition of Atiti Devo yeah. Bhava Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. So number three, uh, Punjab is a rich. Uh, Punjab has a rich heritage of Sikhism and Gurdwaras. The tradition of langars all over the country started from Punjab. And number four, sir, uh, Punjab has famous tourist places which uh, narrate the history of the country. For instance, Jallianwala Park in Amritsar. So uh, bad things. Uh, number one, sir, Punjab uh, is dealing with uh, the issue of drug abuse. The youth of Punjab is uh, dealing with this crisis. Number two, sir, uh, Punjab is still an agrarian economy to a large extent. Manufacturing and services sector have not uh, taken the pace that they have. A lot of diplomatic activities is taking place in Delhi. Yes, Can sir. Can you name some of the visits of foreign dignitaries? The uh, so most recent visit I can think of is US. Uh, uh, U.S. Secretary, uh, a U.S. diplomat. Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, sir, I'm not sure. Any other other uh, dignities? Anybody from Russia? Sir, I'm not aware. Japan. Last 15 days ago. Sir, I'm sorry, okay. I haven't read. Yeah, you haven't been reading the newspapers. Uh, sir, the past few days, not very regularly. Why? Any particular reason? A civil servant, you know, is expected to be aware. Yes, sir. Especially more civil servant aspirant. Yes, sir. That's right, sir. Uh, so that probably because my schedule has been a little busy, but I I make sure I don't repeat this. Are you working somewhere right now? No, sir. I'm not. Can you name the new MPs who have been nominated for Rajya Sabha? Uh, sir, Raghav Chadha is one MP. I I can only think of one. You also have a hobby of healthy baking. Yes, sir. So, how is healthy baking different from usual baking, and what what are the ingredients which are used in the usual baking, the commercial baking, which makes okay. it a you know not so healthy option? Uh, so, uh, sir, by healthy baking, I uh, it is not completely healthy. So, by healthy baking, what I do is I substitute some unhealthy ingredients with healthier ones. For instance, if I am baking cakes or cookies. I'll substitute the sugar with an alternative natural version of sugar. For instance, banana mashes have natural sugar. They can be added to cakes. They not just uh, substitute the sugar, but also reduce the butter content that can be used. Secondly, dates are another natural alternative to sugar. Se uh, secondly, sir, for instance, if I'm making a pizza or anything that uses maida as a base, I substitute that base with millets. It uh, doesn't harm the taste a lot. So this way, I substitute the unhealthy alternatives with healthier ones. The taste remains the same, or sir, uh, it uh, there is a slight compromise in the taste. But I, uh, so I usually bake for my family members, and most of them are elderly and suffering from some form of non-communicable disease. So uh, it is always better than not having nothing at all, having to eat nothing at all. You have not opted for Punjab as your first option. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, uh, there is no specific reason against Punjab. Just that I wanted to work in a bigger state, which has uh, so basically for my own growth journey, I wanted to see greater diversity, greater challenges, and I also wanted to stay closer to family. So I chose Rajasthan within the northern zone as my first preference. Uh, have we seen? Maybe you, can, you must have seen anecdotally. Uh, uh, is there any revival of Khalistani movement in Punjab or the separatist tendencies or at least the general feeling? So there has been uh, some news around this recently but I do not believe there is any anecdote or evidence uh, surrounding this 
the revival of this movement so at present i do not believe there is any uh, solid evidence about its revival uh, you also read books on development yes sir can you name some books which are there yes sir so i've read uh, poor economics and good economics for bad times by abhijit panerji i've read india in uncertain glory by amartya sen then uh, fortune at the bottom of the pyramid by c k prelad what is development economics and how is it different from the other branches of economics so uh, so development economics basically focuses on uh, uh, on the uh, redistributive or the welfare aspects of economy for instance if economy is more about numbers and gdp development economics focuses more on how these numbers impact people for instance are is gdp growth impacting the health and education of people is it helping them enhance their quality of lives enhance the environment that they are living in So, development economics is more people centric and more tangible in its outcomes. You also follow agri tech. Yes, sir. So, any agri tech which will help in solving the stubble burning issue of Punjab? Yes, sir. Uh, within Punjab itself, there is a startup. Uh, it is named Dharaksha Ecosystems. They are working on stubble burning issue. They collect stubble from from farmers, and they convert it into manure, and then they sell it forward to fertilizer industries, plastic industries, and other uh, places. So many good agri tech have come out. Many startups are there. Many new technologies yes. are there. But uh, why is the adoption not so good? First, second thing. Let's say if you are if you are made the secretary of the agriculture department in uh, Punjab. How would you promote the adoption? So challenges of adoption, and how would you promote? Uh, so the first question, challenges of adoption. I believe the first and foremost challenge is scalability. So currently, uh, R and D in the field of agriculture is not. Uh, so the R and D expenditure on agriculture is low. Secondly, sir, uh, uh, taking it to the farm, most of the farmers in the country currently, more than eighty percent farmers are small and medium. a uh, sm- small and micro sector farmers with a uh, farmland less than 1 hectare so they do not have the money or the ability or the literacy to adopt these technologies number 2 sir uh, extension services have not percolated to the extent they should have in the agriculture sector and agri tech would need the support of extension services uh so the second question was how will i uh, promote agri tech uh, so number 1 i will uh, i will bank on cooperatives as a model to help uh, agri tech agricultural technologies reach farmers for instance the amul model of cooperatives has been able to adopt newer technologies and scale better because of the economies of scale number 2 sir i will uh, ensure the penetration of uh, digital uh, infrastructure to the rural areas so that farmers are able to utilize extension services and have the requisite knowledge to be able to use agri tech okay thank you <coughs> so really your option is mathematics yes sir oh, very interesting how do you find it paper was lengthy yeah Sorry, sir. Can you repeat your no, question? No, the paper was lengthy, and you could attempt. Oh. No, sir. I was able to attempt. It okay. wasn't lengthy, sir. Yeah, it was very basic. Rather than this, I asked you. Okay. What are the properties of forty-five degree line? Properties of forty-five degree line. Uh, sir, a forty-five degree line is equally inclined to both the axes, and uh. Equidistant from both. Equidistant and equally inclined okay, as so well. So you have to apply in real administration. Okay. How will it be useful? Uh, sir, so uh, number one, I can think of, uh, for instance, whenever we plot statistics of any policy, we uh, prefer the forty-five degree line because it guarantees uh, an equitable rise. For instance, mm-hmm. for equal amounts of rise in the base, yeah. there is an equal amount of rise in different the outcome. Different groups, different areas. Yes, very, sir. Very good. Now, what does the harmonic mean? <laughs> harmonic. You know, we are geometric mean, arithmetic mean. What is the harmonic mean? Uh, yes. Do you recall? Uh, yes, sir. Can I take a moment? Uh-huh, I do please, recall. Please. So harmonic mean is the uh, mean of the reciprocal of the two numbers. Uh, it has some relationship with the harmonium. You know that? No, sir. I'm. You know that? That what do you call that? that the way it is conceived, the harmonic. I mean, the instrument. It's based on harmonic mean. 
Anyway, now and you have done chemical engineering from Delhi IIT. Yes, sir. Oh, very good. Now, what are the properties of a heavy water? You know, there is a concept of heavy water. You know that. What are yes. the properties? So, so heavy water has higher content of deuterium as compared to hydrogen. It has heavy hydrogen. So, its properties are that uh, number one, uh, it dissolves. Uh, so it dissolves salts better as compared to normal water and uh, so it has so where is it used let me put it that way then so in nuclear power plants uh, nuclear power plant very good yes Pressure also in satellite to some extent yes but why is it used in nuclear power plant yes that's the right answer why heavy water okay. what is the degree temperature nuclear power plant what will be the temperature Does it be more than minus forty? So is it a product by itself, or it's a byproduct of something else? Heavy water. Uh, sir, it can be a byproduct, and it can be found naturally as well. Naturally, okay. Tell me byproduct. Okay. It's a byproduct of which process or which product? Sir, I am not aware. No, Even sir. when you have gas-based fertilizer. Thing, the new all the top so technology with heavy water. Okay. Some of the fertilizer plant, NFL and all. They good. That's interesting. That way development economics. Acha and gazelles. Yes, sir. And whose gazelles do you favor? I mean, uh, your favorite. Sir, uh, Mehdi Hassan, Jagjit Singh, and there is one singer, Ali Sethi. He's a young singer. He re-sings the gazelles sung by Mehdi Hassan Sahab and other. So he's mm -hmm. a new generation gazelle singer. Mm. This Fagwara is a famous industry there, no? Fagwara, it is famous for a uh, gener uh, generator engine parts manufacturing, sir. No, Punjab is lagging behind in certain industrial thing. Yes, sir. Huh? Especially sports good. Why is that? Merit has overtaken Punjab. Why? Yes, sir. So, uh, sir, Ludhiana and Amritsar are two sports manufacturing hubs in Punjab. Ludhiana also? I don't know. Jalandhar, yes. I thought. Sir, Ludhiana uh, excels in bicycle parts manufacturing in other. Bicycle hubs here in Navy. Yes. Uh, but uh, sports could Jalandhar. Anyway, okay. what has happened? Why is the economy improving? Yes, sir. Uh, so, uh, so I believe that despite these hubs, Punjab has not been able to manufacture them well because there is decentralized and unorganized manufacturing of sports goods in these areas. So, uh, economies of scale is missing in Punjab as compared to Meerut or any other city. Mm -hmm. Is there any government policies? Somebody mentioned government policy is not very positive. I don't know the local. I mean, Punjab government policy is there anything in the industrial policy? Uh, sir, I. Uh, the development of these industries. Uh, sir, what I can think of is that labor law reforms have not taken up in Punjab. For instance, states like Rajasthan and Gujarat mm. have taken some positive steps in the field of labor law reforms. Economic Survey 2015-16 mentioned mm. their case studies. The lack of this in Punjab may be one reason. Last question, the drug thing, man. Yes, sir. Eh? Yes, sir. So, what can be done? What needs to be done? Uh, sir, I think a two-pronged approach is needed. One is soft measures, and the other is hard measures. In soft measures, sir, we need to reduce the demand of drugs among youth. How do you For do this, that? Yes, sir. For this, sir, number one, uh, as I mentioned, Punjab is still an agrarian economy. We need to promote manufacturing and services sector so that the youth of Punjab can be skillfully employed. So, skilling schemes, schemes in health, education, as well as manufacturing sectors to promote employment among youth. Number two, sir, awareness at school at schools and colleges so uh, youth since are the most affected by this issue uh, awareness among youth helping role models connect to these youth and uh, making uh, the addiction centers available for youth are some soft measures so in hard measures number one we need to regulate our borders better so that cross filtration of drugs from the golden crescent is reduced number two uh, pharmaceutical uh, shops and industries which are also selling drugs illegally need to be countered through community policing as one initiative. Women on the lines of the Kudumbashree model of Kerala can be uh, deployed to help settle this issue better. Thank you. Sudhi, so, you have worked uh, 
on this initiative of smokeless stove yes ma'am what exactly is smokeless stove uh so ma'am uh, in rural areas women still use the traditional chulha mm. where they burn coal or wood fire and the smoke arising out of it is breathed directly by them mm. a smokeless stove is a minor modification in the design of this chulha such that whatever smoke that comes out of burning wood fire is directly uh, uh channelized through a chimney into the upper air so this stove doesn't completely solve the problem of indoor air pollu- of air pollution but it solves the problem of indoor air pollution by directing this uh, smoke from their wood fire directly to their air so it's not smokeless but it is you are just diverting the smoke somewhere yes, else rather and, than somebody uh, inhaling it it's going somewhere else yes ma'am and it increases the efficiency of the chulha so uh, the amount of smoke that comes out is reduced as well okay so uh, you, when you talk about social entrepreneurship what do you mean by a social enterprise a social enterprise is an enterprise which focuses on profit motives like the other enterprises do but it is uh, it has a social it is directed towards a social cause for instance so how is it different from a normal uh, company or a normal enterprise yes ma'am so in any, terms of profitability in terms yes, of ma'am. cost structure how is it different yes ma'am for instance one uh, thing that i can think of is they play on economies of scale their profit margins are lower but their base is larger so they are able to gain profits for themselves but they are also is it only the intention which is there or is there any you know uh, uh, clauses or is there the company uh, structure is such a way that you know there is a cap on the profit or something like that is there any provision for that in social enterprise um, no ma'am i'm not aware of the cap on what do you call a fab india is it a social enterprise uh, ma'am i'm not aware but if i would take a guess i think no it is but not but then they claim that they are working for uh, uh, you know people of marginalized society they are getting the work done from artisans and they are going there so they are claiming that so if social enterprise is uh, about you know this only then they would be falling into the category of social entrepreneurship but ma'am their primary motive is profit so and that's what okay. i'm asking how would you differentiate yes ma'am so the primary motive of a social enterprise is solving a social issue for instance avanti is a social enterprise that i was working for they were providing free as well as subsidized um, in that case then they put they should go for not for profit organization then why do they call themselves uh, social enterprise but ma'am because a not for profit enterprise is not uh, 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 economically profit. sustainable if the intention is to support people then they can also there is another term called section 8 company where there is a cap on profit so which is in between this then why call it a, a social enterprise i don't know so tell me that's what i'm trying to understand so is it just some kind of marketing tool which the companies now days using they call themselves social enterprise so that they can increase their sales because of the sympathy they get from the clients Ma'am, I do believe that it can be used as a branding tool because customers today are attracted towards social enterprises as their uh, area of uh, purchase. So it can be misused as a branding tool, but I do believe that there are many genuine social enterprises who are working for social causes. There's a term called shrinkflation. Have you heard of it? Shrinkflation. Flation. Okay. No, ma'am, I haven't. Which, okay. So who got the Abel Prize this time? Ma'am, I haven't. A read. mathematician, that's yes, right. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay. Uh, in Punjab, CM has, uh, uh, you know, they are supplying free ration to people. What's your view on that? Ma'am, uh, I believe that a free ration to everybody uh, may not be uh, an economical option for the country at present. I believe that something on the lines of. Uh, uh, coupons to uh, for instance we already have a pds scheme which does provide subsidized ration to the marginal sections of society so i believe that uh, making this very scheme more wholesome by probably increasing the amount of ration that is provided uh, can be a more viable and a more economically sound strategy okay so through civil services which are the top two areas where you would like to contribute or you would like to work upon 
ma'am my top two areas would be health and education because having a keen interest in development economics the understanding that i have developed is that health and education are the two most important pillars of any country so investing in health and education today will ensure uh, will ensure productive as well as uh, sustainable uh, growth for not just today but also tomorrow for instance uh, people due to non communicable as well as communicable diseases are losing their uh, are losing their uh, incomes number one they are also losing productive years of life number three they are somewhere uh, they somewhere become a liability on the nation all these three can be addressed through universal access to healthcare mm -hmm. and number two education ma'am um, unemployment is a basic concern facing the country today so uh, through uh, number one uh, scalable education and number two education which is focused on innovation and can help solve issues like climate change is the viable uh, step for our country of course Thanks. Okay, so we mm -hmm. yes. see this Haryana and Punjab both separated in 1960. Yes. So 1960. Six. Six. Okay. That time Haryana area was very backward. Yes. And Punjab was prospering. That was the main reason why it was separated. So in this last 50 years or so, Haryana has progressed well as per you. Yes, sir. Hmm? It has. Lot of manufacturing here and all. Yes, sir. So it means. Punjab in the last 20 years has failed miserably? Uh, sir, I would not say it has failed miserably, but it has not prospered as much as Haryana has. So, it means as compared to Haryana, it has failed. Yes. Sir. Drug addiction is there, manufacturing is not there, and the Khalistan movement has been there, eh? all those things have been there. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. So, uh, my view on this, sir. Yes. Sir, uh, I believe that uh, number one, uh, the policies that Haryana has adopted may have been to some extent uh, better than the policies Punjab has adopted. For instance, uh, sir, Haryana's focus on uh, women's education, schemes like Beti Bajao, Beti Padhao have been... So, it means all those things are missing in Punjab? To some extent, yes. Also, sir, Punjab is a little differently placed from Haryana. It has a border. So, it is. Border, border, Rajasthan is also in border. Gujarat is also in border. What is the problem with the border? Yes, sir, that's right. But some of the issues like drug abuse and terrorism, which have continued to pester Punjab for the last 50 years, have arisen due to it being a bordering state. Also, okay. sir. This, yes. uh, this farmer's agitation. Yes, sir. Has it affected the production of agriculture production in uh, Punjab? Because mainly yes, in sir. Punjab. Yes, sir. Hmm? It has. And, and, and there are allegations that there was foreign funding hmm. which was funding the farmers and they did all this. Yes, sir. And leaving their fleets and all. Is it true? Sir, about the allegation? Yes. Uh, sir, I do not believe that this is true. Uh, sir, uh, uh, sir, I think a protest of the, uh, at a mass scale, the scale at which it had been happening for the past one year, could not merely be because of funding. I do believe that the protesters were misguided in some sense, but it was because there was lack of uh, clear channels of communication. No, it was funding. Yes, they were having all AC type facilities, five star yeah. facilities. Who yes. will do that? Yes, sir. Poor farmers yes, will not yes, do sir. that. Only rich farmers or the uh, farmers who have bought money from some source will do that. Yes, sir. So funding may have helped the movement sustain for a long time, but I would not believe that the movement okay. was because. Okay. Yes. See, we generally commem commemorate good days, good memories. Yes, sir. Uh, World Women Day, all these uh, Health Day, Water Day, and all. Now, from last year, we have started commemorating some bad memories also. Remembrance Day. Do you know what you very that Remembrance Day? No, sir. Some horror day. And very relevant to your state. Sir, I haven't heard. Partition of... horror, horrors, Remembrance Day, we have started celebrating. No idea? No, sir. Sorry. I August think... 14th is being celebrated now. Okay. Any any other such type of horrors day, bad day is being celebrated anywhere in the world? Any idea? So Black Friday is Black Friday is what? Uh sir, uh, on this day uh, I do not remember 
the exact but uh, uh, so if I were to take a guess probably Jesus was hanged on this day that's how it is we remember that's okay uh, 9-11 yes sir 26 which 11 September is being celebrated yes sir then some uh, follow past days being celebrated yes sir okay tell me the difference between standing committee and consultative committee uh, you heard of these two names yes sir I have uh, what is the difference Sir, so parliamentary standing committees are uh, committees established for a period of one year and they are more formal in their structure. They have a specific agenda uh, uh, and consultative committees are more informal in nature. Who heads these two committees? Uh, Sir, so parliamentary standing committees are headed by chairpersons who are chosen by the speaker from among the members and consultative committees are headed by ministers, I think. Which ministers? Uh, sir, a specific ministers in okay. nano fertilizers. You heard of them? Yes, sir. Okay. So nano fertilizers uh, use nano technology to fertilize uh, farm fields. For instance, uh, sir, uh, uh, for instance, nano particles are impregnated. An example. Where it has been done? Mm, so I In can't India? think. Yes, sir. Mm. Mm. So I can't think of a specific example. What's the difference? Uh, how it functions? Uh, so, so uh, nanoparticles are impregnated with mm. fertilizers and then sprayed on the field so that uh, fertilizer runoff uh, is reduced and uh, the efficiency of fertilizer usage is increased. Okay. This. Uh, Last this half government manifesto also said that five thousand rupees per year or month will be given to the accounts of all women, women. including yes, unmarried women. Yes, sir. That was said. You also qualify for that? Yes, sir. I do. So is it a good step? Uh, so I believe that it is a good step, but probably making it universal may not be as economical. Again, it can uh, some it can. Uh, so it can be done on the lines of the health scheme to allow women who do not need this subsidy to opt out of this subsidy. Uh, and, and, and and Punjab government is already running, I think, three lakh crore to tech. <laughs> That's how the money will come.